Humanity has hit a technological roadblock when it comes to propulsion, but a new concept for a helical engine developed by NASA may finally usher in a new era of cosmic exploration. The new engine is said to break the laws of physics and produce endless energy for deep space travel. Let's take a closer look. The vastness of space is one of the greatest mysteries out there. No one knows how big the universe is. The only perspective we have of its magnitude is capped due to our technological limitations. This has been one of the biggest hurdles in our quest for space exploration. Over the decades, organizations such as NASA have devoted significant resources to exploring our solar system. Even that has been a massive challenge due to the sheer size of our celestial neighborhood. Just a few years ago, the Voyager missions became the first man-made crafts to leave the solar system and travel to deep space, a feat that took multiple decades to accomplish. This is one of the many reasons why NASA has been hard at work to develop alternative methods of propulsion that would help us travel in space faster and more efficiently. Recent reports state that NASA has designed a near-light speed engine that breaks the laws of physics as we know them. This new engine is said to accelerate to 99% of the speed of light, all without the need for propellant. The idea has been developed by NASA engineer David Burns in his spare time, and on paper, it works by taking advantage of how mass may change at relativistic speeds. However, the report is yet to be reviewed by his peers. This study has understandably sparked interest comparable to that witnessed in the early days of the M-Drive. For a bit of context, it's important to know that the aforementioned M-Drive was NASA's first foray into the idea of actually trying to build an engine capable of faster-than-light travel. First introduced by Roger Scheuer, a British chartered electrical engineer with 48 years of experience in the space and defense industries, in 2001, M-Drive is a radio frequency resonance cavity thruster idea with possible uses as a spaceship thruster. It is claimed to create thrust by internally reflecting microwaves in violation of the law of conservation of momentum and other physical principles. The media has frequently referred to the gadget as the impossible drive. Explanations for how the M-Drive could function go beyond the limits of known physics. Perhaps it's interacting with space quantum time's vacuum energy, even though space quantum time's vacuum energy doesn't enable anything to push off of it. Perhaps our notion of momentum has been shattered. Perhaps it's brand new physics, as announced by the M-Drive tests. There is no official design for this device, and neither of the persons who claim to have developed it has committed to explaining how it may function as a thruster or what elements constitute it, making it impossible to determine whether a particular object is an example of such a device. NASA's Advanced Propulsion Physics Laboratory reported observing a small apparent thrust from one such test in 2016, a result that has not since been replicated. Subsequent studies have indicated that the thrust observed was a measurement error caused by interactions with the Earth's magnetic field or thermal gradients. In March 2021, scientists from the Technical University of Dresden published three papers explaining that it was a total fluke. The thrust was explained by outside forces. As for the helical engine, while it is intriguing, it is unlikely to defy the laws of physics anytime soon, despite the claims. Although it has been met with skepticism from some quarters, Burns believes his concept is worth pursuing. The closest star to Earth is Proxima Centauri. It is about 4.25 light years away, or about 25 trillion miles. The fastest ever spacecraft, the now in space Parker Solar Probe, will reach a top speed of 450,000 miles per hour. It would take just 20 seconds to go from Los Angeles to New York City at that speed, but it would take the solar probe about 6,633 years to reach Earth's nearest neighboring solar system. If humanity ever wants to travel easily between the stars, people will need to go faster than light. But so far, faster than light travel is possible only in science fiction. In Isaac Asimov's Foundation series, humanity can travel from planet to planet, star to star, or across the universe using jump drives. We have all read many such stories in our youth, and these same stories are what inspire scientists today to find alternative ways humanity can travel in space. Some characters, like the astronauts in the movies Interstellar and Thor, use wormholes to travel between solar systems in seconds. Another approach, familiar to Star Trek fans, is warp drive technology. Warp drives are theoretically possible, if still far-fetched technology. Two recent papers made headlines when researchers claimed to have overcome one of the many challenges stand between the theory of warp drives and reality. But how do these theoretical warp drives work? And will humans be making the jump to warp speed 
anytime soon. Physicists' current understanding of space-time comes from Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. General relativity states that space and time are fused and that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. General relativity also describes how mass and energy warp space-time. Hefty objects like stars and black holes curve space-time around them. This curvature is what you feel as gravity and why many spacefaring heroes worry about getting stuck in or falling into a gravity well. Early science fiction writers John Campbell and Isaac Asimov saw this warping as a way to skirt the speed limit. What if a starship could compress space in front of it while expanding space-time behind it? Star Trek took this idea and named it the Warp Drive. In 1994, Miguel Alcubierre, a Mexican theoretical physicist, showed that compressing space-time in front of the spaceship while expanding it behind was mathematically possible within the laws of general relativity. So, what does that mean? Imagine the distance between two points is 10 meters. If you're standing at point A and can travel one meter per second, it would take 10 seconds to get to point B. However, let's say you could somehow compress the space between you and point B so that the interval is now just one meter. Then, moving through space-time at your maximum speed of 1 meter per second, you would be able to reach point B in about 1 second. In theory, this approach does not contradict the laws of relativity, since you are not moving faster than light in the space around you. Alcubierre showed that the warp drive from Star Trek was theoretically possible. Unfortunately, Alcubierre's method of compressing space-time had one problem. It requires negative energy or negative mass. Alcubierre's warp drive would work by creating a bubble of flat space-time around the spaceship and curving space-time around that bubble to reduce distances. The warp drive would require either negative mass, a theorized type of matter, or a ring of negative energy density to work. Physicists have never observed negative mass, so that leaves negative energy as the only option. To create negative energy, a warp drive would use a huge amount of mass to create an imbalance between particles and antiparticles. For example, if an electron and an anti-electron appear near the warp drive, one of the particles would get trapped by the mass and this results in an imbalance. This imbalance results in negative energy density. Alcubierre's warp drive would use this negative energy to create the space-time bubble. But for a warp drive to generate enough negative energy, you would need a lot of matter. Alcubierre estimated that a warp drive with a 100-meter bubble would require the mass of the entire visible universe. In 1999, physicist Chris Vandenbroek showed that expanding the volume inside the bubble by keeping the surface area constant would reduce the energy requirement significantly to just about the mass of the Sun. This is a significant improvement, but still far beyond all practical possibilities. Two recent papers, one by Alexei Bobrik and Gianni Martyr, and another by Eric Lentz provide solutions that seem to bring warp drives closer to reality. Bobrick and Martyr realize that by modifying space-time within the bubble in a certain way, they could remove the need to use negative energy. This solution, though, does not produce a warp drive that can go faster than light. Independently, Lentz also proposed a solution that does not require negative energy. He used a different geometric approach to solve the equations of general relativity, and by doing so, he found that a warp drive wouldn't need to use negative energy. Lentz's solution would allow the bubble to travel faster than the speed of light. It is essential to point out that these exciting developments are mathematical models. The scientific community won't fully trust these models until there is experimental proof. Yet, the science of warp drives is coming into view. Innovative thinking on this subject is crucial to making the dream of interstellar travel a reality. In the words of Captain Picard, things are only impossible until they are not. Thankfully, one of the biggest traits of humanity is our drive to find solutions to difficult problems. And this is what NASA scientist David Burns has been doing in his spare time. Unfazed by the failures of the M-Drive, he has produced an engine concept that he says could theoretically accelerate to 99% of the speed of light, all without using propellant. On paper, his design works by exploiting the way mass can change at relativistic speeds, those close to the speed of light in a vacuum. It has not yet been reviewed by an expert. Understandably, this paper has caused buzz, approaching levels seen in the early days of the M-Drive, and yes, even some headlines claim the engine could violate the laws of physics. But while this concept is fascinating, it's not going to break physics anytime soon. As a thought experiment to explain his concept, Burns describes a box with a weight inside, threaded on a line, with a spring at each end, bouncing the weight back and forth. In a vacuum, such as space, the effect of this would be to wiggle the entire box, with the weight seeming to stand still. 
Overall, the box would stay wiggling in the same spots, but if the mass or the weight were to increase in only one direction, it would generate a greater push in that direction and therefore thrust. According to the principle of the conservation of momentum, in which the momentum of a system remains constant in the absence of any external forces, this should not be completely possible. However, there is a loophole. According to special relativity, objects gain mass as they approach light speed. So if you replace the weight with ions in the box with a loop, you can theoretically have the ions moving faster at one end of the loop and slower at the other. But Burns' drive isn't a single closed loop. It's helical, like a stretched out spring, hence helical engine. The engine accelerates ions confined in a loop to moderate relativistic speeds and then varies their velocity to make slight changes to their mass. The engine then moves ions back and forth along the direction of travel to produce thrust. The engine has no moving parts other than ions traveling in a vacuum line trapped inside electric and magnetic fields. While the concept sounds interesting in theory, it comes with significant practical problems. One such problem is that the helical chamber would have to be pretty large, around 656 feet long and 40 feet in diameter to be precise, and it would need to generate 165 megawatts of energy to produce one newton of thrust. That's the equivalent of the output of a power station to produce the force required to accelerate a kilogram of mass per second squared. So, a lot of input for a teeny tiny output. It is inefficient, but in the vacuum of space, it just might work. Burns believes that the engine itself would be able to get to 99% of the speed of light if you had enough time and power. Burns notes the efficiency problem in his presentation and also adds that his work hasn't been reviewed by experts and there may be errors in his math. We don't exactly have the blueprints for a fully functional space travel engine here. What we do have is a piece of groundwork that could be used to develop such an engine. What we have is a dream of the stars. If you found this video informative, you may also like this one, which talks about NASA's Artemis mission and the discoveries it is expected to make. Do you think we can achieve interstellar travel? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.